This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. All right, so in today's Steam Deck news update, I've got three stories for you guys. First off, I wanna highlight a really cool accessory that you can 3D print at home. Next, there's a new beta update that actually includes some cool stuff and hints towards the future. And finally, I noticed a lot of people really wanna know the best way to install Yuzu on their Steam Deck for obvious reasons, so I figured I'd show you my favorite way to do it. I've definitely noticed that since Valve has started ramping up the shipments to happen twice a week, there are many, many more comments here on the channel from people who are able to order their Steam Deck. In fact, my best friend, in fact, my best friend George finally got his pre-order and he is sitting at home in Michigan, super excited to finally have his Steam Deck. Now, once you place your order, Valve takes a couple of days to ship it. So if you were like me when I ordered mine and you wanna know every accessory you should pick up before you actually get your Steam Deck, I have a video here on the channel that you'll love. So every night before I go to bed, I open up the Reddit app and I head over to the Steam Deck subreddit and see what the popular post is of the day. And around a week ago, I noticed this post from Jordan K1 that showed off this weird looking device. Now, if you're obsessed with the Steam Deck as I am, even if you don't have it, you probably know that it comes with a carrying case. And on the back of the case is this elastic strap that goes all the way across, and underneath that is a little divot, which people have kind of just assumed is for your charging cable. So even if you wrap this up the best way, it kind of sticks out a little bit in your bag. It looks a little inelegant. And if you have the 512 gigabyte model of the Steam Deck, it actually comes with a little pouch that you can put the charger in when you put it in this slot. But if you have the 256 gigabyte or the 64 gigabyte one, you don't have that convenient little pouch. Pouch. So that's where that accessory comes in. This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is one of the first games to bring a true console level experience to your phone. Raid has over 600 champions so you can build your team and play Raid your way. This game has millions of champion combinations that let you master countless tactics as you take on raid bosses, dungeon runs, campaign battles, and PvP arena matches. I've been playing Raid for a little while now, and one of my favorite champions is the Sky Touch Shaman. She's got a really cool Egyptian vibe to her skin, and she's an epic rarity, which means she's actually really good in battle. Her passive skill is kind of interesting because at the beginning of each turn, she takes damage, but that damage is then converted to healing for the rest of your party, which is pretty cool. I'm a big horror fan, and there are a ton of cool champions champions that kind of support that in Raid. Another one I really like is Necret the Great, who is legendary rarity. And one of his abilities allows him to team up with any character that he's buffed to apply damage to the enemy. Raid is celebrating its three year anniversary and along with that celebration, they brought character skins for the first time to the game. I've already mentioned I love horror, so the Dark Fallen skin for the Arbiter is obviously the coolest to me, but there are plenty of other skins you can look through yourself. This is the best time to get started in Raid. And if you click my link in the description or scan the QR code here on the screen, Green, you'll get a free starter pack worth almost $40. We're talking three free champions at once. Misericord, Romero, and Tiger Soul, plus 10 Magic XP Brews, 10 Force XP Brews, 10 Spirit Brews. All this treasure will be waiting for you right here, and it's that easy. Just click the link in the description, and I'll be waiting for you in the game. So this is the first edition of this accessory and since I found it, there's been a revision, but I printed this one out and they kind of work the same way. I'll explain why the newer one is better after I show you how this one works. But basically all you do is you take your little Steam Deck charger here and then you can just wrap your cable around the four little posts. The big issue with this iteration of the accessory is that the posts aren't actually tall enough for the cord to wrap all the way around. So you kind of have to put it through the middle of the four posts, which is fine. It just takes a little bit longer. So as far as I can tell, the second iteration of this accessory, not only only removes the posts, it also has a little cover for the top. So you can kind of just wrap up your cord, plop it in, cover it up, and you'll be good to go. And that is the way to do it. I'm actually gonna print one of those out, I think, but for now, this is the one I'm using, and it actually works pretty well. Now, the user who came up with this, Jordan K1, is being incredibly cool. They just included the link to download the STL file so you can print it yourself. I hope in the future they find some way to get like a tip link or something like that, or if they can figure out a way to manufacture these, they should probably sell them because this design is so cool that I feel like a bigger company could whip up something very similar, maybe like 20% different that they could sell on their own. And this person, as far as I can tell, is the first one to do it. So in my opinion, they deserve to take all the credit and reap all the rewards. Unless there's a guy who did it sooner that I don't know about, which is totally possible. And I'm sure you'll let me know down in the comments. But yeah, even though I'm still using the first revision of this accessory, I've been really enjoying it. And I think it's really cool. So I wanted to highlight it here on the channel. If you don't have someone in your life with a 3D printer or you don't have one of your 
own, I am sure you'll be able to find someone on the Steam Deck subreddit because those people have all been extremely nice to talk to. So Valve is continuing their trend of constantly updating the Steam Deck software with meaningful features and the current beta that you can get right now on your device is actually pretty cool. It's got a couple things that you can take advantage of now and it actually has some hints about what's coming in the future. So the first big thing that comes along with this beta update is an improvement to offline mode. Now, if you go from online mode to offline mode, you won't have to restart Steam, which is great. Another huge change that has to do with verification and feedback I am a huge fan of because it's actually something I complained about in my five biggest changes that are needed video I put up over the weekend. And basically what happens is if you opt into this feature, you'll get a pop-up when you close a game that says, hey, do you wanna tell us how this game is running and working on your Steam Deck? Because right now it's either verified, not verified, unsupported or playable. And then you can give your feedback and that'll help Valve update it accordingly. I think this is a great feature because with games like Horizon Zero Dawn, for example, that game is verified to run well on the Steam Deck. And if you run the benchmark tool or you start up the game and play the intro of it, it does run really well. You can set it at original settings, which is PS4 settings, lock it at 30 frames per second at 800p, and it'll work great in the beginning of the game. But as you make your way through, which I found out the hard way by having a save from later in the game, you'll get some pop in, you'll get frame rate drops. It'll just not be a good time. But again, the game is verified. So now with this new feature, when I shut the game off, it might ask me, hey, how's this game running for you? And then I can say, hey, when you get later in the game, it does not run all that well. And then Valve can update their verified status because nothing's worse than seeing that green check mark starting the game up, thinking it's gonna be great and having it not work. I also hope this helps Valve update games faster that say they're unsupported, but then get a patch that makes them supported. There's two examples I can think of off the top of my head. One of them is Back for Blood, which I know Left 4 Dead 2 runs incredibly well on the Steam Deck and Back for Blood is kind of in rough shape, but that game was listed as unsupported, but with the new update, it just got, they added in the easy anti-cheat stuff that they needed for it to work on Steam Deck. So now it just works natively and runs just fine in online mode. But the game still says it's unsupported and a similar thing is going on with Halo, the Master Chief Collection. That is a game where you could run it in offline mode. So I guess it's technically playable, but they've added in the files for easy anti-cheat to work on Linux, which means in the future, we'll be able to play it in online mode. It just doesn't totally work quite yet. But when it is turned on, it would be cool if right away Valve was able to put that green check mark there because Master Chief Collection runs pretty well if you can actually make your way into the game. And most importantly in this update, they got rid of phantom button presses on the home screen for the most part. This was a weird issue where sometimes you would hit the A button on the store or the library and you'd have to hit it again for it to register. That just doesn't make the device feel super premium when stuff like that happens. So seeing stuff like that fixed, which I can verify it is fixed. I tried it out in my beta updated Steam Deck is great. I'm glad Valve is fixing smaller things like that and not just focusing on the big stuff. They've updated the bounds for dual trackpad typing so that users can reach the extents of the keyboard more easily. They added dual trackpad typing support for Steam items, emoji keyboard, tintable emoji pop-up, and extended character row pop-up. They increased the strength of haptics when moving the trackpad pointer over a new key. And they fixed a super weird bug over in desktop mode where if you hit the Steam button and X, it would pull up the old big picture keyboard and the new uh, game mode keyboard, which it's not great. You don't wanna see that covering up 95% uh, of your screen. So yeah, all in all, I think this is once again, a very stable beta update. So if you're on the beta channel, you'll probably already have it installed. But if you're on the stable channel, the last few beta updates have been great. Like I can't even tell the difference. So you might wanna switch over to that beta channel to get these updates even faster. And the cool thing about this beta update is that it's actually teasing some stuff for the future. So I initially saw this on Gaming on Linux, which is a great website. And they originally found it in their official discord because someone brought it up. Basically Valve is finally giving us a lock screen for the Steam Deck. So right now there's no way to set a pin for your Steam Deck. So when it goes into sleep mode and you take it out of sleep mode, it goes right to the home screen, no questions asked. A lot of people are bringing up how that's a security flaw for obvious reasons. Like if someone steals your Steam Deck, they can just play any game that's on it. I'm not positive, but I don't think they could buy a ton of new games on your credit card because there's a lot of protections in Steam against just instant purchasing, which in this case is good, but still it's a modern device. It's in 2022. There should be a way to set a passcode at least when you're starting that thing up out of sleep mode. And from what it looks like, Valve is pretty far along on this, so we probably won't have to wait too much longer for this feature to come to the Steam Deck. But until then, you might just wanna hold on to it a little bit tighter because you don't want anyone stealing it. So a couple videos back, I talked about emulation on the Steam Deck and how easy it is to set up. And there was one emulator that people were really asking for down in the comments. It's called Yuzu and it's a Nintendo Switch emulator. Now I can't show you any games actually running on it because my video will get taken down, but there are some games that run extremely well on Yuzu, like Metroid Dread, for example. And naturally, since the Steam Deck is basically a B360 
beefed up Nintendo Switch, a lot of people, the second they get their hands on it, are going to download Yuzu and get it set up. And if it's your first time doing something like this, it can be a little confusing. Now, I'm not gonna show you how or where to get any of these games for obvious reasons, but I will tell you the easiest way to get it going on your Steam Deck, and that's through an application I've talked about a couple times here on the channel, Emu Deck. Now, you can actually get to it super easily at emudeck.com, and it's just as easy to install as it is to find. I've actually shown off how to do it in a recent video, but it includes pretty much every emulator you'll need, from the GBA to the Super Nintendo to the Nintendo Switch to the PS1, PSP, Dolphin, anything you can think of is basically included with this software. And any emulator that isn't included, you can just download through the Discover Store, and then you just run the Emu Deck installer again, and it'll set it up to work with the Steam Deck perfectly. Like, it'll even map the controls, which is kind of like the hardest part of the entire thing. And the best part is it comes along with an application called Steam ROM Manager, which goes through all of the different emulators that you have set up, finds all of your games, downloads the specific art for each game and then adds them to Steam in their own little category underneath their console. It is awesome. I've tried this with tons of games. A lot of the games I play on PSP, like Metal Gear Acid, Tony Hawk's Underground 2 Remix, Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. It downloads the coolest art for all of them. They work great. Same thing with my favorite PS1 games like Metal Gear Solid and Castlevania Symphony of the Night. All the way up to PlayStation 2 with games like Metal Gear Solid 3 and Tony Hawk's Underground and Tony Hawk's American Wasteland. All of these games that I still really enjoy playing, but now I can take them on the go. So if you're someone like me who has a moderate knowledge of how to set all this stuff up and is learning new stuff every day, this does a lot of the hardest parts for you, which makes it the best way to install Yuzu in my opinion. 